This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I guess I'm sort of the first one to move from the academia and the technology side more to a marketing kind of approach. And I was asked to identify one or two topics that can be of value on the research side and hopefully make an impact one day. So one of the things I've been experiencing lately, actually from ground up, from, from work that we do, is an ever-increasing interest from Korea to Israel. And, you know, in, in being in a, in a semi-public function as a co-chair of the IATI, I found myself flooded by requests for coming to conferences, appearing in conferences, lecturing, uh, meeting trade delegations to a degree that you would not believe. And Modi, you were with me on one of those cases. And you feel that all of a sudden they are all around us. And, and the backdrop to all of this discussion is that in the previous administration in Korea, uh, the president was convinced by a 10-minute meeting with Shimon Peres that Israel is, you know, the water here is different and, and people who drink it have access to infinite knowledge or a key to success or eternal youth or something. But, and and, 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 and the, 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 therefore there was sort of a decree that said thou should go to Israel and find out or, or do something with these guys and work together. And interestingly enough, uh, when there was a change of administration, uh, you'd expect that this would stop and people would bring their own agendas. But what really happened is that this, this thing really got accelerated. Because one of the things they want to do in Korea now is to enhance their, their uh, economy, which they believe is maxed out. They believe the Korean miracle has sort of reached a plateau. And they need to move on to become a creative economy. And there's a whole deal about being creative. And people go to school to learn about being creative. And to them, Israel is again a role model. Now, the, 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 the thesis that I'm bringing up here is that if you look at it as a two-way street, we also think are about to max out and plateau our own model here. We definitely need an Israel 2.0 model, if you will, for our, for our high-tech society. And, and maybe by finding points of leverage, we could take away certain limitations that we respectively have and move on from there. So without further ado, what we are looking for and what I've begun looking from the ground up, probably in a totally amateurish way compared to your methodologies, is to understand where we might be similar, where we are different, uh, and there's more to both of them than one would suspect. Is there a synergistic model? And many people believe there isn't, actually. And basically, what can we learn? What can we leverage? And can we, more than anything else, create or define a new uh, model? So with your permission, I'd go really quick about sort of two in introductory sets of slides, one an introduction to the Israeli VCs setup, another one to the Korean one, and then focus on a few slides on, on what is the core of the thesis as where to look for, for, for sort of the next uh, model. Uh, so as you all know, uh, we just heard the statistics for Rosh Hashanah. We are just a bit north of 8 million inhabitants in this country, uh, which is a bit less than Seoul, the capital of Korea, and uh, with a GDP about of a quarter of a trillion uh, dollars. I'll get to the GDP later. Reasonably good economic rate, uh, growth rate compared to the ECD. OECD, and as we all know, we've joined that organization, what, two years ago, and I think it's made a huge difference since then. Looking at the uh, GDP numbers, uh, you can't probably see it from there. Israel is up here. We have different stats depending on where the um, dollar is. Korea is here. So we're pretty similar in terms of the uh, GDP per um, capita. Um, in, terms, in terms of the impact, a point to, to make about the impact of, of high tech on the Israel economy at large, for those of you who remember us as being uh, an economy exporting primarily oranges uh, and not a very scalable model, taking into consideration I thought they include is cheap labor and water. Uh, today, 10% of the workforce are involved in the high-tech sector uh, in Israel. And the interesting statistic, which is by far the most important, is that 51% of our industrial export comes from the high-tech sector, which means that today we are sort of the most high-tech nation in the world in terms of our dependence on, on that. And now that's the good news, but it's also the bad news because it begs the question, where do you go from here? Okay, so that, that really becomes the challenge. And of course, the highest contribution to GDP growth and 15% of GDP. And we still complain that the venture capital funds don't deliver the goods. Now, when you ask, you know, what makes, what makes a good high-tech economy, the answer you always get, which is probably very true, is the quality of your ecosystem. And there are people who track the ecosystem. God knows how they do that. But basically, uh, they, they have different criteria, and I'm sure you can go into those models. The first one is, is Silicon Valley, uh, second, and the second one is Tel Aviv. I would assume that this is not our definition of Tel Aviv. It's probably the greater Tel Aviv area. I'm not sure. 
but, but, but it's okay. And then you go to Los Angeles, Seattle, New York, Boston, and London. Uh, and th then it goes way down. Uh, the interesting thing I'd point out, other than being proud of where we, stand, where we rank on this, is that actually, obviously, as we know, Tel Aviv, uh, two, two points. Tel Aviv is the only one that doesn't have the ability to scale along a national, within a national market. So other than that, numbers one to six have the benefit of being able to scale locally. And that is sort of a generic problem that will forever be part of the Israeli scene because I don't see our geographic base expanding dramatically in the coming years. I think that's a fair assumption. So whatever we do will always be bound or be opportunistic based on that, uh, on, on the geographical limitation, which leads me to some of the, the other things. Um, our innovation ecosystem, as I said, is the second in the world. We have about 4,800 startups, depending on how you count, and about 760 of them are VC-backed. Uh, uh, now, being, what, 25 years in this business uh, in Israel, you've got good talent, you've got people who've done it before, and there's nothing that investors love more than people who've already done it before because they are perceived as having sort of the, the know-how. Um, and, and a very significant and actually ever-increasing mergers and acquisitions uh, capability. Uh, the industry invests about $2 billion per annum, three quarters of that coming from uh, VC funds, the majority of which are US-based, actually, not Israeli. Uh, I think the three of us VCs are part of this diminishing minority of Israeli-based funds. Uh, exits are rising. Half of this exit value of about $10 billion last year was a single deal of the sale of NDS to uh, Cisco. But actually, the numbers are rising, and Modi will tell us later tonight about uh, his successes there. And uh, we invest practically across the gamut of uh, industries, internet, medical devices, uh, software, uh, although past areas of expertise, such as semiconductors and communications, are significantly on the decline compared to prior years. So basically, that goes to the point that entrepreneurs really follow the opportunity. It's a bit like water. They find where to go. And it's not a top-down exercise, but rather a bottom-up exercise that creates this kind of thing. It was mentioned earlier about our R&D spending, so I leave it alone. Mentioning only that on the D side, rather than the R side, we have the benefit of about 20 binational R&D funds, but the biggest of which is the Israel, US one. And they, 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 are, they, they would be a good uh, catalyst to some uh, sort of binational activity, although so far I think they've been spoiling it. Interestingly enough, the other, the other strength of our ecosystem uh, is R&D centers of large corporations based in Israel, of which there are about 250, and they employ 45% of the workforce in our industry, meaning that actually that half of the high-tech sector is in relatively small startup companies based here who want to conquer the world, and the other half is in large companies who've already conquered the world and have set up a, a facility in Israel. Now, some of them, it's really a trick because, as you will see, when Apple buys Anobit and makes it the first ever R&D center out of the US, then you've turned a startup into an R&D facility. So there's a sort of a movement there. But the whole idea is that these guys in R&D are supposed to be contributing to our economy. Some people will say this is fantastic. There is no other concentration bigger than that of R&D centers anywhere in the world. They even work between us. But at the end of the day, they do not export product. So their contribution to the economy is, is harder to gauge. And they compete on uh, talent, which Obviously, is another thing. I've mentioned the ecosystem. The whole idea, this is very useful when you talk to Korea, is the ecosystem is an unstructured concept. And they find it very interesting to deal with, uh, being in an economy that deals with structure and, and, and the top-down uh, situation. Uh, you know, I always tell them, you know, the Jewish people in 2,000 years of recent history have never had a king or a pope. So the idea of authority or any top-down <laughs> thinking does, does not bide well with us. Uh, and of course, you go through the whole trick of telling people what it is that makes a good ecosystem. And like any good presentation, you want the list to be as long as you can. And it deals with past successes, and it deals with government uh, uh, support, which actually in Israel is world class. One of the only things that governments, in the plural sense, in Israel have done on a world class basis is this interact in, interaction with the industry. Up until recently, I think now they're sort of falling behind. We used to write the book on that. We no longer are. And, and, and uh, I think also our infrastructure should, uh, should be improved. Last point on Israel, and, and then five, five minutes about Korea to what extent, to what I know. Being in an academic setting, uh, I think in the past we weren't that good at sort of combining industry with academia. And I think we've gained a lot of momentum here. And the momentum is actually increasing for the simple reason that was mentioned earlier by you, that money is changing hands. And once 
money changes hands, then people get excited. You've mentioned Kupaxon. Another one is, is, is the inventors or developers of Mobileye in, in, in Jerusalem, sort of an autonomous car, sort of collision uh, avoidance system. The reason, as I mentioned this, is I've spoken to people in Korea, and of course with the huge vehicle industry they have here, they all told me, yeah, sure, we know about Mobileye. We've got three startups that are coming up with something that's better and cheaper. So again, something about the mentality, which is more, let's do it better, cheaper, more scalable as compared to let's be the first to market in this uh, thing. And of course, the conversion of military technology to medical technology in the case of given imaging. And you could argue that there are too, many, too few success stories, but you could really argue that the ones that have been successful have really made a difference. And uh, of course, we talk a lot about how to create a creative society. The key point in discussing and creating a dialogue with Eastern countries is this notion of encouraging risk taking. And I'll come back to that. I, that, that doesn't come across well when you talk to these guys. Um, I know that Modi will cover these things later. The last thing about Israeli uh, entrepreneurs, you know, we have a lot of incre incrementalism in any place we go. We were just talking about the conference we went to yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago. But I really tried to look back and ask myself, have we been able to make a difference? Have entrepreneurs been a brought something to the world as compared to bringing a version three of something? And to my mind, the answer is yes. In 3D printing, in voicemail, in flash memory, the disk on key, firewalls, the whole cyber, cyber world, which is pretty much coming from Israel, uh, ways as, as a pioneer in crowd uh, uh, technology. And what I like more than anything else, and I've dedicated a separate side, is, is, is the whole issue of medicine and helping mankind in, in, in many ways. All the way from protecting our hearts with stents and thereby uh, increasing our life expectancy so much so that now we have a pension problem and uh, all, all, all the way up to devices that help the invalids walk. Which, which and then the last component, which I'll come back to in the context of Korea as well, we are discovering that creativity is not just technology. And as you look at Israelis who go to creating new uh, formats for television, you find that uh, we, we are gaining more and more successes there, so much so that a country that has 0.01% of the world population uh, has had six Oscar nominations in the last six years. Now, you could argue that there's a lot of Jewish members in the Film Academy, but, but maybe there's something more to that. Switch. For foreign films. Hmm? For foreign films. For foreign, yeah, by definition, yeah. Yeah, foreign film. Switching to Korea, and, and I'm basing myself not so much on my knowledge, but over what I've learned from my colleagues there at M Ventures, which is a Korean fund, um, and looking at that. So we, we this, uh, basically, this is part of a much longer presentation. It begins with the key question is, does any of you know any of what they consider to be their success stories? And uh, I for one, yeah. So I for one knew only one, uh, but basically, our definitions of what is a global success might be different. They might be saying the same thing about us. Uh, and we are surprised when people don't know about uh, whatever, Waze or Checkpoint or whomever. But the most interesting thing, and I, I'll, I'll jump right to, to it, when they define what, where they have to go and what they have to do, it's like moving from an economy which is based on being a fast follower on a vertical cost structure and a what they call a no-lose no strategy, which in my mind means no risk. You know. There is no, forgiving for, no, no forgiveness for failure uh, to one that is more innovative based on first moving, horizontal work, and, and so on and so forth. And this is, I be, I, I'm starting to draw to where my personal conclusion is that if there was a model that will allow us to leverage our respective capabilities, we might all benefit from that. And the reason I'm saying that, because interestingly enough, the current government in Korea does not want to do that. What they want to do is really copy the Israeli economy, which means let's go out there and change our DNA and replace it by an Israeli-style DNA. And that, to me, sounds like a sort of problematic uh, issue. Uh, I've got some stats on that. I don't know it takes us far enough. Uh, there are about 100 Korean venture funds. I'm not sure to what extent that number is indicative. T they tend to be smaller than the ones we're usually familiar with. Um, uh, type of partnerships, I, I guess you can't bring a seed from there. The point worth mentioning here is, 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 is actually the institutional side. So when you look at the LPs, they are either the pension funds, as you state, all of them domestic. By the way, the domestic ones do very little work outside of Korea. And, uh, and the government participation, which is huge, through a fund of funds which is government controlled. 
um, and 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 they are Something they are probably the biggest. Like no, no, Yosmao provided a subsidy to capital and risk taking, which they do not. So they are an LP. They convince other people to move in, but basically they would they tend to be the biggest LP in every uh, venture capital fund, which is a unique feature of uh, their economy. Uh, the interesting part is that when you look at the makeup here, and the, the choice of colors is terrible, is when I showed you the Israeli makeup or, or industries which had to do with internet and software and medical devices, this piece here, believe it or not, is manufacturing. We have nothing of this sort here in Israel. And this part here is entertainment, which connects to what I mentioned earlier on the, when I showed them the Oscar rating, that, that, that didn't go very well when they. <laughs> yeah. You Jews have done it again. Uh, um, Exits. Uh, they complain about not having uh, enough uh, trade exits, but everybody complains about that, and, and I don't know to what extent that's a meaningful thing. And they have a whole category which, which is big here and is called stock and bond sale and has to do with redemption. Needs more exploration. I, I, I really can't say too much about that. It hasn't, it hasn't really worked for the venture capital fund. It has not. Okay, so you know, you know. Uh, they seem to be under stress. Uh, Interestingly enough, I looked at three success cases that they brought up with a lot of uh, uh, analysis here. It looks like a lot of the investments tend to be smaller than the ones we have, as do the exits. Obviously, the multiples here are pretty good. That's why they're called the best. But it's more of a multi multiplier uh, deal than a size deal. Uh, so the exits here are like $37 million, $26 million, uh, 18. No, it's billion, it's, it's billion KRs. No. Divide by 1,000. Otherwise, it's, you'd already read about it in the Israeli press as well. <laughs> so, and, and this is a level of exit that doesn't get all that reported in Israel. So, so we're looking at a different... Most of these have been sold to large Korean companies, which is where I come in with the second notion. Uh, as, as we all know, Korea is dominated by 10 chai bowls, you know, holding groups, who control about 70% of the economy. And, and if you want to be something or... Well, no, it's Sam <laughs> Samsung and... And everybody, and, and, and basically the whole notion about the economy is that this structure has propelled Korea amazingly from a fishing society to a world force, but now it's become a limiting factor in terms of the ability to grow, the ability to uh, foster innovation, uh, and, and basically, basically milking the economy as, 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 as a way to get uh, uh, more value. The companies actually guarantee the pension investment. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. So, um, they also feel they need to vitalize the startups, and they have a whole model, which again, interestingly enough, country to Israel is very much a top-down approach. Uh, how to improve entrepreneurship, and you at the Institute might want to work on some of these models. And uh, so there's the financing side and the entrepreneurial side. Um, and... Um, Suffice it to say that the real problem there is, in, in many cases, startups are even financed by debt. So, so you're in hot water from day one as, as compared to having the benefit of the equity. And uh, they've done a very fair analysis of issues and, and, and uh, challenges, uh, which interesting enough to read some of them to you, uh, limited investment market. Well, we, I don't know if we say the same. Uh, conservatism, uh, decrease in angel investors. We in Israel are seeing a boom these days. You know, we've got angels, big angels, mega angels, and, and, and super, it's, uh, super angels, what, what have you. Yeah, I mean, you look at the number of Israeli angels who've got more than 50 companies in their personal portfolio, and it's a pretty sizable number by now. So, um, and um, moving on to the, to the case of uh, Mac, the, 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 this fund was the first and ultimately the only fund that enjoyed a, career, uh, uh, a subsidy to create sort of an Israel-Korea fund. And they've done so in two arms. One is a medical device one, and one is a sort of ICT one. And uh, it's got like three partners, an Israel arm, Israeli VC, a Korean VC, and the government that I've mentioned earlier. These guys bringing in 40% of the capital. So the structure is pretty much Korean government, Korean government is putting in 40% of the capital. Contrary to the Israeli model of Yuzma, where the, where the government took a backseat, uh, they do not really take a backseat, although they claim to. So it's a very different uh, so structure. Yeah, there's only already one going. And basically their model, which is closer to what I'm trying to talk about here, is to try to create more of a technology transfer and exchange platform. And basically to go to Israel for sort of the early stage, the disruptive stage, 
and then build from it. And they've taken a case study of a company they invested in called Eyesight, which does sort of gesture recognition uh, stuff, like probably number five in Israel. I think you know everything somebody does here. There's five of them immediately, but basically to go to to, to work, have them work with the Korean smart set-top box, and add sort of component level, technology level features, and come up with what they call a synergy effect, which you might argue doesn't necessarily need VC investments. But the point, the point I'm trying to make here, is that. Let's look at our respective issues and see if, there, if there, we can start thinking about some models which will, which will make sense. And it's not trivial because when you look at it from the business side, where I come from, everybody's suspicious of Korea. Everybody's happy about the recent investment of Samsung in a company that came out of TAU. And everybody's saying, well, let's see if, if, if the IP will stay in the company or somehow find its way to a Korean lab. So, so there's many issues that have to do with, is it really a fair game? Is there a win-win scenario here? Uh, so again. Israel is pretty much a global play in the terms of, of, of a VC side. Korea is pretty much a domestic play, dominated by the large groups. I am? All right. So basically, uh, just the, the, the issues are, on one hand, uh, being different. But um, on the synergistic level, two things that we should be thinking of. Korean capital is landlocked in Korea. And uh, there might be a scenario of getting some of it out. We've already had a whole mission of, of pension fund managers here looking at new models. Israel is a very US-centric model. Korea is more of an Asia-centric model. Now, where that can come into play, and that will be my closing remark, so that I don't end up getting divorced from your sister, um, is, is, is the following. Think about specifically the med tech and the life sciences sector. And that connects with the issue of IP, because this the claim to fame of anything we do in, in medtech or in life science is obviously IP-based. Because you have to pass for regulation, you have to create sort of uh, something for yourself. We have how many medtech companies, uh, Benny, here? 600, 700 in this country? 900. If each one of them needs a physician of staff, that's 900 doctors that I don't know where they get them. They probably fake their resumes. But at the end of the day, each and every one of these companies, if they break through, if they make it, if they prove that point, what will they do? Go and apply for FDA. And if they don't do FDA, they will begin by an EU listing, which means that never in their lifetime will they ever get to the Asian market. Never, by definition. Okay? And this is where the opportunity arises. Because somebody on the other side of the globe is hungry for innovation, has a wonderful scalable platform, can go register in Korea and in, in, in China with relative ease, to some extent Japan possibly, but, but there's a whole access to, to a billion and a half people. And you can create sort of simultaneous models where you can leverage Try, uh, you know, uh, uh, clinical trials on both sides where you could do swapping of, of, of manufacturing, but you could really do things in parallel or concurrent as compared to never doing them at all. Because the average medtech or life science company will either be shut down or sold before it ever takes a single flight to, to, to the east. Thank you very much. This program was brought to you by Collar Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University.